Hey everyone, today I'm having a look at a kit of Corsair Vengeance Memory. So this is the low profile and it's in black. It's an 8 gig kit. It's also designed for both AMD and Intel. Now for a look at the memory itself. So you can see the heat sinks are extremely low profile. They only come up to the height of the actual PCBs themselves or slightly higher. The actual height of the heat sinks is 26.25 millimeters. You can see on one side there's a Corsair Vengeance low profile sticker and on the other side there's a sticker with the memory specifications. So the memory runs at 1600 megahertz, 99924, 1 1.5 volts and it's two 4 gig sticks of dual channel DDR3 for a total of 8 gigabytes. Now for a close look at the modules. So you can see that the PCB is actually green. It doesn't look as nice as a black PCB obviously but these modules do come with a number of different coloured heat sinks. Just a bit more of a close-up look around the memory. So it's certainly a nice looking key. I really like these low profile heat sinks. It's good to see low profile heat sinks on memory because the high profile heat sinks really don't make much of a difference to temperatures. They're quite unnecessary and as I've mentioned in past videos all the high, pro high profile heat sinks really do is restrict your options for CPU coolers. Alright I have the memory installed into my test bed. I'll just quickly go over the specifications of the test bed. I'm running a Core i7-2600K, Asus Sabertooth P67, an MSI GTX 560Ti Twin Frozer 2, for the boot drive I'm running a Corsair Force 3 60GB SSD. I'm also running a Western Digital Black SATA 3. The power supply is an NMAX Revolution 1250 watt. The CPU is water cooled by this Danger Dan triple radiator water box. Okay now I'm going to show you some screenshots of my test results. For all the testing that I did the CPU was running at stock clocks. The screenshots will include CPU-Z to show the current memory clocks and timings and also the SPD information. It will also include A to 64 in the sidebar of Windows 7 just to show you current system stats, temperatures, etc. It will include A to 64 cache and memory benchmark results and also Super PI results. So there will be two screenshots with two different results. The first will be the memory running at stock clocks, well actually the XMP profile which is 1600 megahertz 99924 CR2 1.5 volts. The second screenshot will show the results that I got after I overclocked the memory to 1866 MHz, 101124 CR2 1.55 volts. So only a slight difference between the two results. Only in 8064 cache and memory benchmark, Super PI stayed exactly the same. So the reason it was only a small performance increase was because I had to back the timings off so much to get the memory stable. I also found that increasing the voltage didn't make very much of a difference at all to stability. So that's why I only increased the voltage to 1.55 volts. So from my testing I found that this memory is highly optimized at the XMP profile. It's really clocked at the the maximum performance settings for this these particular modules. That sums up this review. 
please subscribe, like and favourite if you want to see more. Thanks everyone.